Welcome to Elementary Mathematics, Parent Partnerships for Success, Kindergarten through Second Grade. In this 15-minute session, we're going to be sharing with you some of the key shifts in mathematics for our students, as well as some of the strategies that you'll see come home on their work from their daily math class. We're also going to discuss some ways that you can support your students at home. My name is Beth Gonzalez, and I'm the Director for Elementary Mathematics, and I have here with me one of my team members. Thank you, Beth. My name's Kristen Brazel, and I'm one of your elementary mathematics specialists for Duval County Public Schools. Today I'm going to walk you through the important knowledge your child needs to know at each grade level. But first, before we get into specifics, let's look at some of the shifts in the standards that we have now versus the standards that we've had in previous years. When we talk about building skills across grade levels, we talk about thinking about math as a story, with each grade level being a new chapter in that story. So your child's second grade teacher is building upon what your child learned in first grade and even kindergarten in order to teach new skills. No longer are skills taught in isolation. When we talk about your child learning more about less, we mean that students are learning a fewer number of topics in each grade level, but learning them to a greater depth before moving on to the next grade level. When we say that your child should learn math facts easily, we mean that your child must become fluent in certain facts at each grade level. We expect children to think fast and solve problems. That means it's not just important for your child to solve problems, but to do it quickly so that it's applicable in the real world. We expect students to really know the math and really do it. No longer is math just a series of steps to memorize in order to solve the problem. Now, students truly understand why math works the way that it does. And finally, we ask children to use math and real world examples through word problems. This allows students to see how math is applicable in their own lives and in the real world. Now let's go to Beth for some more specifics. In order to facilitate the shifts that Kristen described, several different things are happening every day in your child's classroom. So the first example of something they should experience each day is access to procedural skill and fluency. As Kristen described, fluency is an important part of students becoming able to quickly recall facts and put them into action in multi-step problems. Additionally, we want students to be able to think about numbers flexibly. So each day for a short period, they're focused on work that is often below grade level, but helps support access to on grade level work. Secondly, students have access to application problems. Those are real world problems. They help students make sense of why am I doing this math? So for instance, we have an example on the screen. Helen spent an equal amount of money on each of her seven grandchildren, and she spent a total of $42. So this is an example of a division problem where students can read it, represent what that means, and then solve it in the real world. Why am I doing division? Here's an example. Finally, students will have access to lessons around conceptual understanding. This helps students understand why the mathematics works. We begin with having students access manipulatives or concrete items, and then we move them to representing that pictorially, and then more to an abstract representation, like a standard algorithm or something that you are used to seeing. We first show them three cubes plus eight cubes, and then we show them how they represent three plus eight in an equation with a solution. So in kindergarten, most of the work your child will be engaging in centers around counting and cardinality and a really deep understanding of it. So our children need to know the names and numbers of the count sequence, and that includes both forward and backwards, and starting from any given number, not only zero and one. Students also need to count to tell the number of objects, so if I have three jelly beans on my counter, I know that that's one, two, three jelly beans. And each jelly bean represents one number, with three being all of them. We can compare numbers so we know that five is greater than three. We start our basics with addition and subtraction. And you'll see on your screen that includes using the equal sign to make very simple equations. And then finally, we're working with numbers 11 through 19 to gain an understanding of place value. Students understand that 11 is made up of a bundle of a 10 and one extra one. 19 is made up of a bundle of 10, nine extra ones, and everything in between. 
Moving on to first grade, we see that students are getting deeper with their work with addition and subtraction. They're truly understanding the meaning of that equal sign. So students work with addition and subtraction to understand the properties of operations. We know that as fact families from previous years. So you'll see on your screen 10 plus 5 equals 15, therefore 15 minus 10 equals 5, but also that 15 equals 10 plus 5. We want students to understand that the equal sign is a balance. Students often generalize that the equal sign means the answer comes next. So by exposing them to that, they understand the equal sign means that the amount on the left and the amount on the right are the same amount, and that sets them up for success in higher mathematics. Students are working with word problems um, through 20 to add and subtract, and it's important to know in kindergarten and first grade, the word problems are read to them, so if your child needs that support, by all means provide it. They work deeper with place value through the hundreds, and they extend their counting sequence to 120 to really establish that place value knowledge. Finally, the last piece of core knowledge in this grade level has to do with measurement. So students begin by measuring with non-standard tools, such as blocks or paper clips, and then progress into moving with standard tools like our rulers and our meter sticks. A new focus this year are number bonds. Number bonds are a way for students to organize the information in a real world or story problem in order to prepare to solve. Let's do an example. Imagine a farmer has 12 eggs and he sells 6 eggs. How many eggs does the farmer have left? When we use a number bond, we identify the whole and each of the parts. In this case, the whole is given and is 12. Next, we identify the part we know, which in this case is 6. Once we have organized the information, we solve for the unknown, which in this case is the part. After students read the problem and draw a number bond, now they will use various strategies to solve. Many students know doubles. They know 6 plus 6 equals 12. Other students may use a number line, begin at 6, and count on to 12, identifying that there are six more. Lastly, some students may use six and count on six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and see the total is six. Ultimately, we want students to be able to write the equation that represents the solution to the problem. 12 minus 6 equals 6. In second grade, students are working with more sophisticated number and operation problems. They're working with larger numbers and they're also doing this in word form. So students are now solving addition and subtraction problems up to three digit numbers and they're using their knowledge of place value to do so. You'll see on your screen a couple of the models used to add and subtract in second grade, which Beth will describe in just a few minutes. Students are also measuring and estimating lengths, but this year they're only doing so with formal units of measure. Inches, feet, yards, meters, and so on. The units we use on an everyday basis. They're also adding and subtracting length. So if I have two feet of ribbon and my boss gives me one more foot of ribbon, I now have three feet of ribbon in all. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the mathematics that you'll see your students doing this year. I'd like to talk about a multi-digit subtraction problem. Let's do 752 minus 99. In this case, I'm going to use the standard algorithm for subtraction. This is the way I learn and the way many of you likely learn to subtract as well. When I demonstrate this, I'm going to use terminology that's familiar to most of us. So, in order to do this problem, I think 2 minus 9. I cannot subtract 9 from 2 and get a positive number. And so I borrow from the 5, making it a 4, and I carry the 1. 12 minus 9 is 3. I now move to the tens column, and I think 4 minus 9. I can't subtract 9 from 4 and get a positive number. So I borrow from the 7, making it 6, and I carry the 1. 14 minus 9 is 5. And then 6 minus nothing is 6. Some of us may have even learned just to bring down the 6. This is an efficient way to solve this problem, and students are still expected to master the standard algorithm for subtraction. 
However, our language has evolved to describe the values of the digits more explicitly. We don't say borrow, but rather regroup, and we identify the value of the digit. Let's do some work that leads up to that, and then I'll demonstrate our new language around the standard algorithm for subtraction. So one of the first things we do is we talk to students about rounding and the relative size of the numbers. This is to help them make sense of what the answer should be when they carry out a traditional algorithm. If we look at 752 and we round to the nearest 10, we get 750. If we look at 99 and we round to the nearest 10, we round to 100. 750 minus 100 is 650. This helps student under, students understand around what their answer should be. The next thing we do is work with subtraction in expanded form. So we break apart the digits to represent each of their values. 700 plus 50 plus 2. Many of you have probably already seen this in your students' work. Minus 90 plus 9. Again, we can carry out our subtraction problem, but here we see the values of these digits. 2 minus 9, we have to regroup, otherwise we'll have a negative number. So we change 50, or we regroup it, and we take 10 away, and we make it 40, and we add the 10 to the ones column. 12 minus 9 is 3. We now move to the tens place. Again, 40 minus 90, we need to regroup. So we take and we make 700, 600, and we move 100 to the tens column. 140 minus 90 equals 50. And finally, 600 minus nothing is 600. And we can add these um, values from each place value for our total answer, which is 653. This is the same as what we got when we did the standard algorithm for subtraction. This helps make meaning. We move to the standard algorithm for subtraction with students after this work. Again, let's do 752 minus 99. We do the same work, except here, students have the foundation to understand that this 5 is not 5, it is in fact 50. So we say 2 minus 9, we can't do that and get a positive number. So we're going to regroup and take 10 from the tens column, making this 40 and moving the 10 here. 12 minus 9 equals 3. Again, this is now our tens column. It's really 40 minus 90. And students understand that from their expanded form work. We're going to regroup, take 100 and move it to the tens column. 14 minus 9, we can still do that. It's very easy for students and it's 5, but they understand that this actually represents 140 minus 90 because it's in the tens column. And then this 6 represents 600. 653. I hope this helped you understand some of the pre-work we do before moving to the standard algorithm for subtraction so we know students have a solid understanding of what's happening. So Beth has shown you a few representations that your child will work with in K through 2, but we see a few more on our screen. We see the number bond, which Beth described to us already. We also see a tape diagram, which is another way that children can organize their thinking before delving into solving a problem. We see tens frames, which children use a lot in kindergarten and first grade to understand small numbers and begin to what we call subitize them, to understand that six is made up of a five and a one. So when they become older, they can add and subtract with great ease. We also have number paths, which are very similar to number lines, but allow the children to see that each block on a number path represents one number. That also connects to their work they do with connecting cubes. On this screen, you'll find some suggestions to how to help your child at home with K2 mathematics. The best thing you can do for your child is to talk to them about mathematics. Research shows that speaking to your children and engaging them in conversation is the single best thing we can do to prepare them for academics and for life. 
When your child is struggling with mathematics, it's important to encourage them. Sometimes things can be tough, but we want to make sure that they persevere in problem solving and become lifelong mathematicians. And when they do find that success, rejoice with them and in, engage in excitement with them so that we can make sure that our children become lifelong lovers of mathematics. On our website, we're working hard to put together a series of resources to support you in supporting your child at home. Please go to www.duvalschools.org. Select Departments, Academic Services, and then Mathematics. The direct link can be found on your screen. We're working hard to develop resources to support you. Many of your teachers are sending home the parent letters. They can also be found in full color versions on our website. Additionally, we have a link that points to some supports for homework help, and we have some documents to describe the key grade level work. We hope that you'll find these resources helpful and we're open to hearing other ideas you think might help you further. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to hear this message and thank you for the support you're providing your child. On the screen, please find contact information for myself and my team and feel free to reach out for any help you need in the future. Thank you so much.